Welcome back to Warthorn Weekly News. This week, the dev server was open for a third time, so I'm expecting that patch to be rather close. Perhaps, maybe even Tuesday. As with any dev server, their preliminary patch notes were revised, and there wasn't a whole lot added, which makes me confident that they're finally going to load out this patch. One of the biggest changes this time around was that the helicopter game mode finally had an arcade and realistic mode, and it was open to the public who did not buy one of the helicopter packs, just to let them test it out. I played both of them, and I feel that arcade is actually more fun than realistic. Perhaps a further play would make me change my mind, but I just found that killing tanks and enemy helicopters in arcade was more fun. And realistic, you only got one spawn, so there's less things to shoot at. And to efficiently kill tanks, you had to go reload at an airport every time, and that got pretty annoying. In arcade, you got mid-air reloads and more than one spawn, which led to more enemies to shoot down. Although it's possible this may lead to some balance issues, as I found the first US helicopter, the AH-1 Cobra, to be probably the best as it, while it didn't have any ATGMs, it was armed with two frontal miniguns, which have a crazy rate of fire and good range, allowing them to murder any enemy helicopter nearby. Overall, I didn't mind the game mode, and if RP gain for helicopters is like it is for planes and ground forces, then I think I'll be sticking to that game mode to research new helicopters. Along with the update to the dev server, Mike 10D did another data mine. And things here got kind of interesting. First off the list is another type of armor, composite boron carbid, which, according to Wikipedia, was used in Heeways to protect the pilots. Now don't go around thinking this is going to protect you from tank shells. The inertia of the shell itself would be able to tear your bird down. The second thing on the list was crew surrendered. Mike didn't put any further notes down on what this meant, but in the section of new text, it apparently has to do with one's death. My assumption is this is actually for naval forces for when your crew is depleted to 0% opposed to saying that you sank. Now it says that your crew surrendered as the crew percentages aren't realistic at all. And in fact, most naval engagements, when a ship sinks, a majority of the crew survives. Personally, I hope that Gaijin would do away with the crew percentage thing and focus more on making taking damage more severe. Apparently, heat damage was buffed slightly. Helicopter spawn point costs went up from 1.1 to 1.28. There was a new helicopter ATGM guidance system that appears to be like the Fritz X or AGM 12s. This makes sense as the UH 1B was armed with AGM 22s, which are really just American SS 11s and shouldn't be mouse guided but keyboard guided. Though this will be quite a detriment to that individual helicopter because the difference between mouse guided and keyboard guided could be great. Also, keyboard guided ATGMs haven't been working at all as of late. Also among the new text was some random bits for helicopters and I assume the helicopter game mode but at the very end was weapon type mine which I also assume has to do with naval forces. Maybe they're finally adding mines to the game. The T-64B upper front plate got a slight buff against heat and the Type 80 armor was redone. No deals exactly what that means, but you can still shoot the drive report and one-shot them. Besides that, some miscellaneous stuff that doesn't really matter. Also found in files of the dev server was an IGLA air-to-air guided missile and IGLA launchers for the MI-35M. Now, I'm not surprised about this at all, as during the helicopter announcement, it was stated that if helicopters sucked too much against jets, that they were thinking about giving them air-to-air air missiles to help deal with that and this is obviously a move in that direction into aircraft uh, tactics yes uh, I'm not sure but probably maybe we will add some anti-aircraft missiles okay. to, to the helicopters now I haven't heard of anyone finding any American anti-air missiles but I'm assuming that they'll pop up eventually I'm expecting that if helicopters get air-to-air missiles that jets will get air-to-air missiles as well which starts leaning towards does this mean that rank 6 jets is just around the corner? If so, I think I have some grinding that needs to be done. A more disappointing statement was made in the comments of one of the dev blogs about the new pilot models. On the Russian side of things, a player asked if he can immediately fly his helicopter on the release of the patch, and the reply from Keofox was, hey, the update will add helicopters to War Thunder, and after a while, battles will become available to the owners of the pre-order kits to you. Or maybe immediately. This was followed up by another administrator saying, Hello, 
Yes and Yes Premium. Oh yeah, Honda was asking about whether they're premium or not. And you can fly on it. On the beginning of the PTA, OPT, helicopters, we will announce in addition, it will be almost immediately after the patch updates, a few days later. Now they could be that there's something lost in the Google translation of this, that maybe it's just the helicopter game mode won't be there immediately. Though it could also be that the helicopters themselves won't be there immediately. Now having a patch about helicopters or not have helicopters on launch day would be embarrassing. But there has been quite a few issues with the helicopters and how they fly, so I wouldn't be surprised if they needed a few more days of development to iron out the bugs. On the first day of the last week, there was a Q&A with a lot of disappointing answers, but a few hopeful ones. So I'm going to read the hopeful ones so we don't get depressed. The first question I'm going to go over, the German P-47 model does not seem to be correct. The P-47s captured by Germany were of the Razorback kind, not the bubble canopy. Do you have plans to fix the model? And I really enjoyed this answer. The model will be updated with P-47 overhaul, which will come eventually. Players and developers alike want the iconic Razorback version in game. This P-47 overhaul makes me cautious as those things are rather powerful and adding more of them to the game or fixing in their flight models could lead them to be super overpowered unless they got a battle rate increase but the addition of the Razorback would be welcome because maybe then I could have five P-47s in my lineup instead of just two. The next question are there any more plans for US heavy tanks perhaps premiums? There is still the T-26 E5 and the 155 millimeter T-30 to be explored as well as others and the answer was yes there are plans for American heavy tanks at least two which Two, we do not yet want to say happy face. Will we see more mid rank SPAAGs like the AMX 13 DCA twin 30 millimeter and Type 61 SPAAG? Japan and France could definitely do with some more spag love. Unfortunately, there were many difficulties with research for information about these spags, but we do not rule out their appearance in the game. A Japanese prototype with a 76 millimeter universal cannon can be interesting. Now, the last sentence and this is what really draws attention to it is what do they mean by a Japanese prototype with a 76? I don't know of any Japanese cannons that were 76 millimeters. I do, however, know of a Type 61 Spag that had a 75 millimeter cannon of the Skyscraper, although it was not dual purpose. It only fired HE and proximity fuse ammunitions. I know of another 75 millimeter truck, the Shisen anti-aircraft truck, armed with a Type 80 75 millimeter cannon apparently could also be loaded up with a 105 millimeter cannon but that wouldn't be a very good spag unless gaijin somehow implemented flak shells to be used the final question i want to bring attention to is are there any technical difficulties that prevent implementation of afterburners and the answer was as far as we're aware no now for the longest time i've heard that gaijin's engine cannot deal with afterburners or going supersonic though the first time i heard this was many years ago and since then they have updated the engine at least twice so it wouldn't be surprising if they did currently have the ability to implement afterburners and supersonic flight which would hint towards rank 6 jets being rather close i'm really hoping we don't have to wait till gamescom next year to get them besides those questions there's quite a few of these answers that were rather disappointing of gaijin just denying things it's like a french he-177 the fant g-59 they also denied a hungarian tree saying that they would probably just be premiums and someone else's nations and other models of the STB and Type 74 Although this was for a very annoying answer as they apparently can't get enough information on the various models of these. Which is annoying because I can find actually quite a lot of information just by snipping around on the internet. I guess that's not verified. There were quite a few dev blogs. I recovered the pilot one where they remodeled the pilots. But there was a, finally an airplane dev blog for the I-225. And on the dev server the thing doesn't fly sideways anymore which is great. There was a dev blog for the T-54E1. But honestly rating a lot is boring and I already showed the vehicle off in a prior video. In the same vein of that, the Warrior got a dev blog, which I have also already covered, so I'm not going to go over. Finally, some food for thought, a user of the name Fire Raid 233 had spotted that on the dev server, when you select naval forces, the icon for arcade ship battles was that of a Japanese sub chaser. Which makes you think maybe they have the Japanese Navy planned sooner than we think. But anyways, that's just about the news for this week. If I missed anything or if you have any comments, hit me up down below or 
on my Discord. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you didn't like the video, don't hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. I make these videos every weekend and I make random videos throughout the week. I've been doing a lot of train memes lately. So hit that bell icon to be notified anytime I upload anything. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.